Good morning, folks. Welcome, observers. Today we've got pre-seismic signal science, a rare moment of clarity from climatology. But the big story today, and the overwhelmingly most important story right now, is the existence of major flare potential on the sun. Since yesterday morning's blast, only one other significant flare has occurred, smaller, confined CME. But it's turning in to face the Earth, and any big eruptions that follow will be aimed our way. Corona hole flanked by filaments here as well. And as we discussed in last night's video, that stream is on its way to Earth and likely combined with the edge of the coronal mass ejection from yesterday morning. In about 48 hours, the stream and CME combination will arrive, and while it shouldn't be scary, it may produce low-level geomagnetic storm conditions. As we wait for this combined impact on Thursday, the bigger concern will be that the interplanetary space has been cleared and the Thursday impact will act as preconditioning. It's not just more eruptive events from the sunspots we're watching for. Filaments flank the coronal hole and then south of the sunspots near the limb. Those are eruptive threats as well, and even though they have shown no signs of instability so far, it can happen in just a few hours. So we'll be watching those and of course the solar flare activity at the sunspots. For now, we've got the one event on the way and eyes open for more big spots and looks like there's more coming behind them as well. The solar watch is high. First up in the articles today, a sign of good science. They looked at pre-seismic signals of the Schumann variety and found they are not able to forecast quakes nearly as well as the other factors seen before like total electron content or geomagnetic anomalies. Always good when science gets honest in this way. It's the same situation here with Schumann, by the way, that we say to those posting those resonance graphs online. They're very beautiful, but it's a last in line effect. It happens afterwards, last, not before. And while it is informative, it tells you of what has taken place, not what is coming. Top story today, excellent look from geologists at how heating causes cooling. And this isn't even the Heinrich event forcing, but it's actually funnier this way because rapid warming over short periods leads to a Heinrich event cooling and over long periods, like they're talking about here, leads to glaciation and ice ages. No matter what, the end result of warming is cold. This planet self-corrects. They also remember that heating releases abundant nutrients and cold kills the world, which is the opposite notion you'd get listening to Al Gore. Folks, the full, true story of climate science, solar forcing of earthquakes and human health, the earth disaster cycle, pole shift, solar micronova, PDF of the book is now available at the link below. Much cheaper than the physical copy of the textbook, and since it's a PDF, you can search it, which many of you find more important for your research. Our latest book, now available in arguably better PDF format, instantly for half the price at the link below. Observer speed dating is coming this weekend at Observer Ranch. Hopefully we get as many matches made among like-minded observers as last time. August Dunning is coming for the premiere and final pole shift conference of the year, mid-month. Holiday times follow, and actually, folks, the family event on November 22nd is going to be pretty awesome. Think about coming out for that one. Rookie year of Observer Ranch is almost over, and we greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow right here, but right now it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.